Let's do it. Let's compare the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra against Apple's iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. Welcome you good looking audience to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, Samsung released the Galaxy S22 lineup, including the incredibly capable Galaxy S22 Ultra, which has a bunch of amazing features. The latest generation Snapdragon processors, a built-in S Pen, and a gorgeous 6.8 inch display. Among the other great features of this phone is a barrage of cameras here on the back. Samsung has four different cameras on the back of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. In this video, I'm first going to compare the cameras themselves, the technology, to what Apple has in the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. After that, I took to the streets of Cleveland for an entire weekend out with these phones. I usually do more of a standardized test between these devices when I compare photos, but in this case, I want to try something different. Just a weekend trip that really shows off the capabilities of the phones in normal use. These are the photos that I wanted to take while I was out that night and the next day. So it's kind of a more real world example of how these photos actually line up. Is there much of a difference? What mattered while I was out for the weekend? That's what we're going to talk about. That's what I'm going to show you. There's a lot of really cool situations and places that we went. So stay tuned. If you helps you at all, there are chapter markers down below so you can skip around and go to the parts that you care about. So let's go ahead and kick things off. As I mentioned, we're going to first start off by talking about the hardware. Samsung has included four lenses on the back of the S22 Ultra, whereas the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max only have three. Samsung starts with a 108 megapixel wide angle lens. That's your standard camera lens, your one time zoom. Then we go from a 108 megapixel wide lens to a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. That is your ultra wide 0.6 zoom before we go to one and then our telephoto lenses. Speaking of the telephoto lenses, Samsung has dual 10 megapixel telephoto lenses. One for three times optical zoom and the other for 10 times optical zoom. Now let's compare those to what Apple chose to include on the iPhone 13 line. Apple used the same camera setup on the iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. So even though the 13 Pro is technically a smaller phone, for these shots, I used the iPhone 13 Pro. It'll have the same camera as the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but it was a little easier to carry around since I was already carrying two photos around this entire time. Apple starts things off with a 12 megapixel wide angle lens. Again, it's one time zoom standard lens, but Apple does have a wider aperture on its lens than Samsung does. Its aperture is at a 1.5, whereas Samsung's at a 1.8. Theoretically, this should allow improved low light performance by allowing more light to come into the sensor. It should also result in a quicker shutter and it can capture photos faster, reducing motion blur in several photos. But we'll see how that actually plays out when we get to our sample shots. After that, Apple again has a 12 megapixel for its ultra wide lens. Apple has a 0.5 zoom versus a 0.6 zoom on the Samsung. Apple fits just a little bit more in the screen, but not by much. Really, in most of my shots, I didn't really know the difference until I was looking at the two side by side. Apple again, though, chooses to have a wider, faster aperture on the iPhone 13 Pro's ultra wide lens than Samsung does. Apple this time used a 1.8 aperture lens versus Samsung's f2.2. The difference again here being improved low light performance and a faster shutter in brighter situations. Apple had really struggled with low light performance on the ultra wide lens with the iPhone 12 line. So it was a big deal that Apple improved the aperture and low light performance on the iPhone 13 Pro with that new improved F 1.8 aperture. For the telephoto lens, Apple only has that three times optical zoom. So Samsung also has a three times optical zoom and a 10 times optical zoom. So we should see much better results when it comes to zooming on the Galaxy S22 Ultra but Apple does have a higher resolution on that. So if we're looking at the three times optical zoom, Apple does have a 12 megapixel versus Samsung's 10 megapixel. Samsung though offers incredible 100 times digital zoom on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Apple only offers 15 times digital zoom. So if there are times where you really need to zoom in, 
you need to use the Galaxy S22 Ultra because the iPhone won't let you go past 15. That said, when we look at some of those sample shots, you'll see they're not really usable for anything. They're not great in terms of quality, but if you want to look at something, get more detail, anything like that, it's a really cool tool to have available. It may be more of a party trick than anything actually usable for posting on social media, but it's awesome that it has it, whereas the iPhone just doesn't. So let's go ahead and look at these photos. As I go through all these photos, your iPhone 13 Pro shots will always be on the left, and the Galaxy S22 Ultra shots will always be on the right. Now, before we even headed out to Cleveland for the couple of days, we had some crazy weather here in Ohio where everything was covered in ice. Everything just sheets of ice as it would rain and freeze, rain and freeze, and just repeat this process. So everything in our yard was covered in ice. And I wanted to take a picture of my unfilled bird feeder, which was frozen shut. And you can see a lot of really nice detail in both shots, the cracks inside of the icicles. The iPhone did a better job of bringing out the green and the browns, but it also made the the plexiglass look a little bit yellowed and the icicles a little bit yellowed. So I'm torn here because the Galaxy did a better job with the ice, but the iPhone did a better job with the rest of the image. Otherwise, can't argue, both have a lot of detail. As I made my way to Cleveland, started enjoying some of the architecture up there, and I love these cool spinning vents that are on top of some of the older buildings. And you can see the detail in this zoom shot. The iPhone, it doesn't look bad, especially just at 100%, but once you zoom in a little bit more, you can see how much grain is going on in this zoom photo. And we look at the Galaxy photo, there's still grain, but there's more detail. Looking at the top of this, where the nuts and the bolts are, it is just a big difference between the, the iPhone is able to offer and what the Galaxy is able to offer. You're looking at optical zoom with the Galaxy, so even with a lower resolution, which produces a little more grain in the image, it's still sharper than what the iPhone can do with digital zoom. As I made my way outside to the streets, I just took another street shot here showing off the strip, and you can see both these photos, they look pretty comparable. There's not a lot of differences between both. They both look very fair, pretty even on everything. If we want to get really nitpicky, I can zoom in like on this street sign. It's a little bit better balance on the iPhone. It's a little darker on the Galaxy, but this is incredibly nitpicky. Let's go ahead, move on to the next photo. We ran into Flannery's to grab a drink. So I'm here across my brother using, this is just the standard wide lens, no portrait mode effect here. And the skin tones are better on the iPhone. It's a little more saturated. Usually I am seeing that the Galaxy is more saturated than the iPhone, but in many of the photos we're gonna talk about, the iPhone looked a little more saturated and a little more on the warm side. So in this photo, I think my brother pops a bit more. You can see the red on his cap is coming out more than it is on the Galaxy side. It just looks a little flat. And let's go ahead and pop up the portrait version of each of these. This is the Galaxy photo here on the right again and the iPhone photo here on the left. Once more, much better portrait here on the left with the iPhone than what the Galaxy did. The Galaxy, it looks too flat to me. This does not look like a flattering portrait on the Galaxy side. And if we look into his ridiculous hair that he is sporting at the moment, you can see some of the detail work. The Galaxy did a worse job with the background letters. You can see that Y has been sharpened around the edge of his hat, but his hair just below, I think is better defined. If we look at the iPhone photo, the lettering, good, nice and blurred, that good background bokeh, but his hair gets a little bit fuzzy on the edges. So. It's, you know, give or take. Overall, I'm gonna choose the iPhone photo as a better looking portrait shot. I think he's better separated from the background and has better skin tones. The Galaxy looks a little flat. Sometimes it did better or worse with its definition around the edges and the background bokeh. Here's a nice interior shot of Flannery's. The iPhone photo, it is very vibrant and bright. It's almost too bright for my liking. And if we look at the Galaxy, it's just way too dark. It's a really dark shot and I don't see like, any detail, all the colors are flat, and it's producing a lot of grain in the process as you just look into the chair seats. I don't know what Samsung was doing here with this shot or why it decided to make it so dark, but yeah, between these two shots, the Galaxy Photo definitely did not hold up to what the iPhone could do. As I popped back outside after our couple quick drinks, I took a photo of this building again across the street and I liked the texture on the side of the building. I thought it looked really neat. So snapped the first photo in this series with just the wide angle lens, your standard one time zoom. And I think everything looks good on both photos. I do think colors in the car pop a little bit more. The blue tones a bit better here on the iPhone. They're a little washed out this time, which could be that HDR coming into play on the Galaxy. And as we start to look in a little bit more on the photo, 
there's not too much of a difference. I think the blacks are a little bit more true to tone to black on the Galaxy side, but it looks like there's a little bit of a haze coming over the iPhone photo. A little bit hazy-ish, I would say, compared to the Galaxy shot. But I think it's more interesting when we go ahead and zoom up. So now we're looking at a three times zoom. This is the iPhone shot here on the left and the Galaxy shot with a three times zoom here on the right. We can start to see how these things look good when they're both at three times zoom. I don't really know as much of a difference. I think the iPhone does better this time around. It doesn't look as hazy. So before it was likely the sun hitting that lens, causing a bit of a haze to lighten up that black on the side. Now, if I look at the Galaxy photo, now it's a bit washed out. So it was either the sun that was hitting the lens or just how it was exposed in the image. But let's go ahead and zoom in further. Now we're looking at 10 times zoom on the iPhone here on the left and the Galaxy here on the right. It is night and day, folks. There is a huge difference. Apple did increase the contrast, but they're also trying to increase the sharpening because this is all digital. This is digital zoom on the iPhone, whereas the Galaxy, that is just natural optical zoom. So it's not as contrasty, doesn't pop as much, but it is way sharper and way more realistic. The Galaxy Photo, by far, you can see how much of a difference that an actual optical lens goes versus the digital zoom. I mean, it's a, a mess. It's a sharpened, they're guessing on angles. It is a mess over on the iPhone when you're getting into the digital zoom space, and that's just unfortunate. It definitely looks better on the Galaxy. Just for fun, here's what it looks like at 100 times digital zoom on the Galaxy. Uh, I, I can't do anything with this. I mean, we're not looking at anything specific. I just want to see how it deal with the textures. And it really sharpens the edges. You can just see how it really crisps up the edges on those bricks. So you over sharpen when you're trying to get that detail in there. They did a decent job removing noise. It's not really a usable image to do anything with, but it's still pretty impressive of how far away I was and what shot you can get with 100 times digital zoom at your fingertips. So we had some drinks over Flannery's, checked out some buildings again, and now making my way over to the butcher and the brewer for some more drinks and shareables. In this case, we're walking down the street, still in daylight. And between these, looking at different parts of the photos, I think iPhone went out here again. I swear I'm not trying to be biased, but I, I love the colors on this, which is what drew me to the image in the first place. And they pop more on the iPhone. There's just more saturation with those colors and they don't look overly saturated. The Galaxy Photo just looks a little flat to me, like uninteresting. So it could be a contrast thing, which many of these can be dealt with in post because these are all just off the sensors, not edited images. But I just think they've done a little bit more to the sky. It looks like almost painted on the Galaxy version but a little more natural on the iPhone side. Better colors, better contrast over on the iPhone than on the Galaxy. Switching to the ultra wide angle lens, this time Galaxy is a little too dark. I think they've gone too far with the contrast. It's a little dark. The iPhone at the same time, I think it's a little too light. I could see that exposure coming down just a little bit to make it more interesting. I think the contrast is better on the Galaxy side, but they need to bring up the highlights a little bit straight off of the sensor. Here's a really interesting shot. So this is in the basement of Butcher and the Brewer, and they have a lot of their brewing equipment down there. And at first glance, both photos, they look awesome. I think the colors on the Galaxy, a little bit better in this case, but overall it's very dim down there and they both look great. But let's go ahead and look at the details just a little bit. We're going to zoom in on these barrels and compare what we're getting from the iPhone towards the Galaxy side. And in this case, you can see Apple's wider aperture just coming a little bit more into play. As we zoom into the photo on the Galaxy side, there's more noise than we're seeing on the iPhone. So even though it's a larger megapixel sensor, there's not as much light coming in, which does result in a bit more noise in these photos than what we're getting on the iPhone side of things. So a little bit better low light performance with the iPhone thanks to that faster, wider aperture. Another good example of that noise is when we're looking at the bars. You can see they're a little bit more black, more uniform on the iPhone side, whereas the Galaxy, they're a little more splotchy and a little more noise coming out. Same thing with underneath the barrels there on the Galaxy side versus what we're seeing on the iPhone side. Just a little bit crisper, a little more detail in the bands around the barrels. So low light here, again going to iPhone. Once we finished up having some more drinks over Butcher and the Brewer, made our way next door to the House of Blues for a quick concert. So this time watching Gaelic Storm up in the balcony boxes and I thought this was a really neat comparison shot between the two though it was really hard to get them both at the same time because the colors were so fast. 
as the lights were changing throughout the concert. But good wide shot, I'm happy with both of these. Despite the color differences, I think they both did a great job. Red on red with the Fiddler, it's a little rough on the iPhone side. There's some bleed going on. And with the dark spots over on the Galaxy, it's again a little hard to deal with. But I think for what they did, standing at 100% wide angle lens, both phones did admirable in this situation. If I zoom in a bit and check out the drummer, Ryan Lacey here playing the drums, his hands moving crazy fast as they play. So we have motion blur on his hands in both images. The iPhone did not bad, but the Galaxy, by far better. By far more usable shot. He's actually clear around his hat. Look at the noise that we're seeing on this iPhone shot with his background curtains. You're not seeing that on the Galaxy side. We're again talking optical zoom here versus the digital zoom of the iPhone. There's no difference. I mean, his shirt, you can see the letters on his shirt. I know he's moving in the iPhone shot, but there was no way you're going to get as much detail in those small letters. Galaxy for sure. Look at the collar of his shirt. You can barely even see the definition of it on the iPhone and just blends together. You can clearly see the collar here. Zoom once more, even in low light, Galaxy's winning out. If we talk about the wide angle lens though in low light, we're going to move over to the iPhone having the favorability. If we look at the sign here at the top, we're going to move in on that all seeing eye inside of the hand, that uh, third eye situation. There is less grain in the iPhone image. We're pulling this up on the Galaxy. There is a lot of kind of, it's a little more less, a little more washed out, a little flatter. There's not, where's the color in all of the swirls like that are on the knuckles? You're not seeing that on the Galaxy image. Same thing, moving to the side, all these different statuettes. There's just not as much detail and crispness. So just because it has a 108 megapixel lens does not make up for the low light performance or some of these other situations where the iPhone is still able to win out because of the pixel bending that's going on with the Galaxy. Both phones, they look good, but if you get into the details in some of these, the iPhone wins out. And here, we're looking at low light situations with the wide angle lens, the iPhone is superior. I wanna hit a couple more concert shots and we'll move on. Here we have a band shot, great. I wanna zoom in a little bit. So here we have the iPhone. Let's pull that up a little bit bigger. We've got uh, Steve on uh, the guitar here. And if we look at the similar shots on the Galaxy, we're looking at, again, low light performance. And Apple is able to do such a good job. Like if we're looking at his arm and you can see the veins in his arm and they're just not as defined on the eye or on the Galaxy. Now there's more bleed and everything else going on. It's a little bit fuzzy. Same thing with the strap on his guitar. It's fuzzier. So it's low light performance. I think right now I'm thinking that the Galaxy is going to win out in terms of the zoom, but low light performance is huge. And I think that the iPhone is winning there. Next morning, up bright and early, hitting up West Side Market. Gonna find some bread, vegetables, meat, all sorts of fun stuff. So let's go ahead, just a general photo, ultra wide angle shot between these two. This is the iPhone shot here, which I think looks great. Galaxy shot also looks great. My immediate kind of thought between the two, a little more contrast, a little more visually interesting on the iPhone side of things. These things can be adjusted. I think it just looks a little bit better on the iPhone side, but man, both these shots look very good. Let's go ahead, take a look at some of the stuff we found at the market. Here is a array of peppers, bunch of fun colors. Let's see how the iPhone looks. See, this looks to me that the iPhone got something hit on the sensor or the lens is smudged, but it does not look as good as the Ultra does to me in this shot. It looks washed out on the iPhone side. Samsung, this was a great shot for you. Those peppers pop. They look great over there on the Samsung side. French macarons, anyone? In this case, I think the iPhone wins out. It's a little bit better balanced. The Samsung came out too dark. So for whatever reason, I don't know if it was those neons that were giving it issues, but the Galaxy is too dark for my liking compared to the iPhone's version. It pops a bit more. The sign has good contrast to it. And you can see more fun colors in like these backgrounds and the foods down below. These just look a little flat, a little flat over here on the Galaxy side. Following Westside Market, we stopped by the Van Gogh exhibit. This interactive exhibit that is up in Cleveland was super cool to see. And you go in this room and it's projected on all the floors and the walls around you. And this is a big difference between these two photos where I already said at the beginning, the iPhone was leaning a little more warm and vibrant this year compared to our past comparisons. And this is a good example. And it is much more true to life based on what I saw. The iPhone, it pops. Those yellows are really bright to more represent what Van Gogh had painted, where everything looks flat and drab on the S22 side. It has much more like a blue tone and has really toned down the contrast. 
I don't know if Samsung got nailed too many times on having too much contrast, so this time they tried to overcorrect, but if I was just looking at these two shots, the iPhone, it looks more like what I saw and it looks a bit better here. Last couple shots with me, guys. Here we have Cleveland's famous guitars that are all done by different artists. It looks great here. Both the guitars look awesome. It's a little darker in the Galaxy image. And I wanna bring attention to like the C, okay? For some reason, I don't know if it's the lights, but it, they've blown out the highlights on that C. So when we compare them to the iPhone, there's no yellow in the C of Cleveland on the Galaxy S22, where you do see it in the C on the iPhone side of things. So I think it's the highlights. There, There's other times where I've seen the HDR do much better on the S22 Ultra than the iPhone. And in this case, it looks like the iPhone was able to take it. Finally, some jumbo size paints. Both photos look good. Both photos look good. I think in this case, Galaxy wins. The iPhone is too yellow for me. I know there's a lot of yellow in there, so it might be tricking it into making that warmer tones. It's too yellow. The wood looks better in the Galaxy S22 shot. That's a much more realistic looking, it's a little flat overall, but more realistic looking color balance than what I saw on the iPhone. So how do things shape up between these two devices? My biggest takeaway is this. Samsung is kicking Apple's butt when it comes to telephoto capabilities. Apple only has three times optical zoom, and that's it. If there's any point where you need to go beyond that, there's no comparison. With 10 times optical zoom, the Galaxy S22 Ultra clearly wins hands down. But I also found myself not really utilizing the telephoto lens all that much. Two full days of shooting, just normal situations, going to dinner, going to concerts, going to shows, walking around, getting food, getting drinks, all of these times I never found myself really using the telephoto lens. There were times it was necessary, and in those situations, the S22 won out. It just depends on what you're shooting and how important that may be. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys thought, which one took better photos, and which ones did you prefer. Let me know over on Twitter as well, at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. I've got more videos heading your way.